In this mini lecture, I am going to talk about the two types of computer memory based on the von Neumann model of a modern electronic digital computer. So, the computer consists of two types of memory. One is the main memory or also known as the primary memory. Here it is. Or the secondary memory or the auxiliary memory. Let's first try to understand what is the main memory. Main memory is that memory of the computer which holds the instructions and data required by the CPU for executing a program. That means if it is currently running some program, it is 100% required that the current instructions and data should be in the main memory or the random access memory of a computer. Some important properties of this main memory. It is volatile in the sense as long as the computer is on, that means the power supply is there, the contents of this memory will remain there. The minute you switch off the power, the content of the memory are lost. Additionally, it is very very expensive as compared to the secondary memory or the hard disk and it has a much lower capacity compared to the secondary memory. Now what is secondary memory? Simple way, your hard disk, your DVD, DVD drives, sorry your DVDs, your CDs, your pen drives, these are all example of secondary memories. What is the purpose of that? You are not going to be running all the programs all the time in the main memory. So the data and instructions not currently required or not currently being used need to be stored somewhere. And the place for that storage happens to be your secondary memory which generally is your hard disk. Now let's try to just run through a little more bit about the main memory or the primary memory. As I told you the main memory contains data as well as instructions that the computer is currently processing. For example if you open up Word and you're typing something into it, Word also happens to be a program. So Word has a number of instructions and data. Whereas suppose you have not opened up the browser, you have not opened up Excel, all those Excel programs and any other data are going to reside on the secondary memory or the hard disk. Whereas only your Word program is going to be in the main memory. It has limited capacity as compared to the secondary memory. For example, if you have typically looked at your hard disk, your hard disk will have 1 TB or 500 GB. Okay, whereas your main memory on most of the machines is going to be anywhere from 2 GB, 4 GB, 8 GB to 16 GB. Because why it is smaller? Because not everything which is on the hard disk is going to run at the same time. Only the things which are required to run at that point of time are loaded onto the main memory. They are made up of transistors and those are basically semiconductors. You will be studying a lot about them in your digital electronics in your first year or in your third sem depending on whichever branch you are. It is extremely fast as compared to the secondary memory that is the hard disk or the pen drive. For example, it may be 100 to 200 times faster reading or writing compared to that from the hard disk. But it is not the fastest memory. The CPU or the central processing unit itself has a very small amount of memory called as the register memory. That is the fastest. All right. And then between the main memory and the CPU, there is another super fast memory, slower than the registers, but faster than this main memory called as the cache memory that we'll be talking about in a subsequent lecture. Now, most important, why you require main memory? Because you cannot execute a program using the one human architecture without having the RAM or the main memory. Important thing is it is volatile. This is a snapshot of a number of chips of the main memory. So here if you see what happens is these are number of memory banks or memory chips. These are inserted in the particular slot available of a computer. In later on in some of the videos, I will show you all these parts in very much detail. For now, this should be good enough. Now, let me give you a little more idea about the secondary memory. Secondary memory is that memory which contains data or instructions which are not currently being used by the CPU or 
you can be storing data permanently in that. Say for example, we do a census count that means the population count of India. That data is not going to be used always. It needs to be stored somewhere. So that is going to be stored in the secondary memory. It could be a hard disk. It could be a magnetic tape. It could be a pen drive. It could be a DVD. These are all examples of secondary memory. Important, it does not depend on power supply. Even if the power is switched off, neither data nor programs are lost. Cheaper compared to main memory. The capacity is much larger as I had shown you compared to the main memory. Some of the secondary devices are portable in the sense, for example, if you have a pen drive, I can take data from your machine, copy it to my machine. I can take programs from your machine, take it to my machine. So that's what you mean by the word portable. Now, I had already mentioned the speeds are 100 to 200 times lesser than reading from the RAM or the main memory. Most important part, just as we have house addresses, your memory is also divided into blocks. So whether it's the main memory or second memory, you can think of it like this, okay? It is divided into number of blocks like this, okay? So each of this, okay, each of this fellow holds some data and each of this fellow has an address. So this is square boxes you can think of as memory cells and each memory cell has an address. So your main memory is basically divided into a bits and pieces like this into a number of cells just like your housing colony. Now this is how your hard disk will look like. This is a Samsung hard disk. In a subsequent videos I will show you a lot more about the computer RAM as well as the hard disk. You will get beautiful videos not developed by me but developed by third parties which will give you excellent idea about both of these aspects. Until then, goodbye.